Hello and welcome to the Wixie Boy Kitchen. Come on in, come on folks, let's do this. So I've not done this for a number of years, but I really want to get back on it. I'm doing lots of cooking at the moment, coming up with things, cooking other people's recipes, and I want to share this with you guys. I mean, I post things on Instagram, people go mad for it. It's, it's beautiful, fresh food. You know, healthy, I know it doesn't show, but bad metabolism and all that, big boned. But it's healthy food, and I want to get you cooking. I hate hate the fact that people do this just eat and all this other stuff just cook just eat so we're going to start off this new series with a really simple recipe it's basic curry sauce and I'm going to show you a few curries during the course of this year um, and all of them I tell you all of them bar none will include this recipe so you need this recipe it's essential so if you've gone to another video and you've came back welcome I'm going to make a small batch today because I've still got batches in the freezer so you can basically I would advise doing the large batch, which I'll put a recipe in the description, um, and you're basically just quadrupling it. So you've got kind of six liters of basic curry. You then put it into two portion bags. I always do two portions. It's always gonna be for two. Not four, not six, two. There's two of us in the house. I only need to cook for two. Right. So if you've got a family, you just double it. I mean, you know, it's not rocket science. Right, so we're gonna crack on. So today, I'll put, I'll probably make some sort of graphic, have it maybe here where my cooker is or here where the pin board is. So you need, you don't need this whole cabbage, the large batch you would. For today we'll probably use a quarter of this I guess. I've just got back from the grocers, I've got to give these guys a shout. Minster's Greens, uh, absolutely fantastic grocery shop, I mean it's, I'd say it's the best grocers I've ever been in, bar Australia and New Zealand. So let's say Northern Hemisphere, best in the Northern Hemisphere. I know it's a big claim, get down there, try it for yourself. Right, so we'll probably use about a quarter of that bad boy. We've got a pepper, got a whole pepper, 40 grams, and we got a carrot. It's about, I think the recipe says 25 grams, but I just go with a whole one. As long as it's not a too big, we'll go for that bad boy. Then we're gonna make a ginger, and garlic paste and then we got some ground spices what have we got we got cumin we got coriander we got masala we got some fenugreek down here and some paprika turmeric and that's it i think it's pretty simple this so let's get cooking right so for this we need so for the spices we're going to do that first we need a teaspoon of coriander ground teaspoon of cumin ground teaspoon of gram masala I mean you can make this yourself you can buy it in good Indian shops I actually got this from Doha uh, from the markets there from the soup which is absolutely fantastic it's lasted me a good year right then we're gonna add some paprika same all teaspoons these exactly the same so obviously the more you make obviously you multiply this uh, right what else have we got on there? I think fenugreek. Uh, ground, really. So what I'm going to do is, it's quite hard to get ground fenugreek, so I'm just going to chuck a teaspoon in there and give it a, give it a good old bash, you know. It's not really going to grind it massively, but it's going to break it up a bit. Do. Okay. Oh, get me vape out of the way. Right. And then, so... There's our dried spices, that's all we need. I say all, you know, if you haven't got those things, it's gonna be an expensive business for you, but I would suggest keeping these things if you're gonna make curries a lot. Get down to your local spice shop. I mean, I've got, a, I'm lucky in Wimborne, we got a place called Spill the Beans, which is um, absolutely superb for dry goods. You can buy all these things by the gram. Um, they're, they're vegan specialists. Um, <laughs> fuck that to vegans, but yeah, they're vegan specialists, but they do do an amazing array of stuff, rices and all that shit. And they also do like, you know, your turmeric tablets and all that bumba clap ting. Right, so let's get this out of the way. We can put these spices away. Ah, put these down here in my spice drawer. Okay, so we got those, we'll keep them out of the way. Next thing we need to do, cut this carriage. I mean, it's all this stuff is, um, 
I mean, it's simple stuff. We're not, we're not doing much chef in here, but we're just going to be, am I going to use a, that half? You know what? I'm going to go with a half. Good for you, isn't it, eh? Uh, you just want to loosely shred this, really, to be honest. Um, get yourself a really sharp knife. Lucky enough to uh, visit Kyoto last year. Found this knife. Beautiful. Badger inscribed on it. Why wouldn't I have? Um, yeah. It's the sharpest. It's the best thing I've ever bought, I think. It's just incredible. So, there's that done. What we'll do is, should we put it in? What should we put it in? Let's put it in a saucepan, get it out of the way. Get my food bin. So that can go in there for a the minute. Right, we're gonna do carrot next, I think. Probably don't really need the whole carrot, but certainly not gonna hurt. Give it a little peel. Because you are gonna you are eventually gonna food process all this stuff, so it is advisable to wash your bits and pieces before you use, especially with a corona kicking around still. Right. Basically, again, we're not gonna be too chefy with this. We're just gonna do it into little cubes. So what I do is do it in half, quarters like that. like that like I say it's not anyone can do this shit man probably advisable to put something under your board like cut your hand open but pretty confident that's not gonna happen with me right let's do this roughly chop that really uh, we're gonna finish on the onions because they're gonna be the ones that we're gonna do last oh yeah I forgot to mention the onions they're not here but I will they will be, my friends. They will be. Right. So, I think I'm just going to chop this down the middle. Get the old pippies out. Just going to give this bad boy a wash, actually, because I didn't wash him earlier. Okay. Again, nothing too strenuous. Nothing too strenuous, just gonna give it a little. I'm just showing off with my shopping skills there, really. Didn't need to do that, but you know. It can just be like this. Like I say, we're gonna we're gonna process all this stuff anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Gonna practice your knife skills. Go ahead. Gonna take a bit of that shit out, I think. All right. Okay, that's our pepper. Just gonna chuck him in there. Yeah, make a mess, you know, you'll get used to that. Right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna stick something under this. I'll show you a little technique in a minute with the onion. Right. You need quite a lot of onions in this, actually. 800 grams, so it's about, what have I got here? Six, seven, no, two, four, six. Yeah, so I've got about six of the bad boys. Um, Again, we're not going to, and this, this is probably the good time to get your, probably good time to get your pot on, get it on nice and low. Oh, stick on this one actually, not so brutal. All right, nice and low, you just want to cook these through nicely. You don't want, you do not want to brown these bad boys. Right, so, again, I will, sh I will show you a fine, a little method for the onions in a minute, but we don't really need it for this recipe. Well, we don't. We definitely don't. Okay, that's fine. So, I would just say, just like this. Roughly chops is probably the term. There is a French term, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Okay. So there's a lot of these to get through. Tip of the day, how to finely chop an onion. Uh, 
you cut it in half first take the end off keep the core very important uh, obviously this one is going to be an absolute dick and not be able to peel right if you need to lose the skin do it i mean you would normally have a bigger onion than this right so you've got it there you keep that on so that holds it together so then what you want to do you want to do really thin right up to the core but not through it all the way down to there and then you need to if it's a big onion you need to do this twice but for this one you need to come there be very careful take it up to the core and then hold it what i do is like to grip it with my thumbs but do not get your thumb out you always have them your fingers out like this arched it's probably the best term and then you're holding it together it's all oh, you're not going to have any waste there apart from the bit at the end look at that beautiful probably about there you could go a bit further but the trouble is it starts getting bigger then it depends how how finely you need it for this dish actually it doesn't matter so i'll just go with that I don't want to waste any of that good stuff right let's chuck him in there but like i say you do not need that for this recipe absolutely destroying these onions now as you can see this knife is going through like absolute butter an absolute dream get yourself i would definitely recommend getting yourself a really good one cook pot um got mine from salamander which is in Wimborne. absolutely fantastic kitchen shop very pricey but very good quality stuff um we'll get yourself down there i've got these one of these newfangled type casserole dishes light as hell uh i've got to give nana nana jane a shout out she got me that for christmas probably use that three or four times a week absolutely superb it is rice anything do everything in it a nice risotto in it last night might give you a might do a video of that soon show you my risotto onion all over the floor it's not a problem emma can clear that up later when she gets home from work right we're down to the last one we're nearly there stay with us people stay with us right Right, so the onions are on. We got them uh, sizzling away over here. Remember to keep them nice and low. A little bit of olive oil. You do not want to brown these. So they're on there. Set this over here, keep that more central. Right, okay, put that out of the way. So, garlic and ginger. Now we need to make a garlic and ginger paste. It's a very useful thing to know. Uh, it's very simple. It's just a little bit of water, garlic crushed down, and ginger. It's quite a lot of this, actually. I'll probably use be using half of this. You want about five or six cloves, I'd say. Probably that many, and a good lump of ginger. Probably half of that. Uh, we can probably just give that a wash and then just grate it. The skin on. You don't really need to take the skin off if you're going to grate it down. I think you can add some nice flavour. Right. So, just top and tail these. This is how I do ginger. But if you haven't got uh, garlic, if you haven't got one of these little, one of these, you can slice it or you can just, if you've got one of those hand crusher things, you can just use that or however you normally would do it. You're not stupid guys, I know. I think this is the quickest way, using one of these bad boys from Italy. Very good place for them. France. Any of those EU states are good for that sort of shit. Right. Okay. Let's get rid of this a second. Oh, bollocks. It's fine. Right. Peel off that bit of skin. 
Should come off easily once you've top and tailed them. Need to crack on with this because I need to get it in with the onions in a minute. I'm not going to worry too much, be too fussy. Right, so what I like to do is put a bit of water on it. Stop it all sticking to that. Right, okay, so. Leave the big bits in. Why not? Good for you, this stuff. Probably don't want any of that horrible skin. I'm not going to use that one. Okay, one more. I'm probably going to put all this in there. A big chunk of this in anyway. Bloody hell. So that's all in there. Got a nice paste, that's gonna go in. Uh. Onions are doing well, so just give that a little stir. I think what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna stick a lid on this. Okay guys, so we've got the onions on and we've got the garlic in. So now, we're gonna start building this up. Um, another, another thing to just mention actually, if you've got a pressure cooker, um, you could do this in that. Do this in that, Does that, is that English? You could make it in that. It's, it's actually what the book kind of recommends, but I haven't got one of those, I'm not, because I don't live in 1982. Right. So we got the onions in. We're now gonna get everything else in there. Just chuck it all in. Give it a good mix. Beautiful colors. Look at those colors. So, so we got that in. So all the veggies in there. We're now gonna turn this up a little bit. Gonna move it across. In go the spices. All those brown spices that we prepared earlier. And you could wait with the gram masala till later. I tend to just add a bit more at the end. Gives it a nice fruitiness. Right, so we got the spices in. Now we need to get some water in there and really get this. This is where the press the the um this is where the pressure cooker would probably be useful which you can really get this stuff done quick we haven't got that so we're just going to boil it so 400 milliliters of water goes in where's my little thing oh this will do so what i've done put a tin of these bad boys best tomatoes you can get you don't have to use tins if you've got fresh tomatoes you can use those Absolute look at those flavours. Look at those colours. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so we've been boiling this down now for a good 10-15 minutes. So now we're gonna puree the bastard and we're gonna get some of those aromas out. So go oh, look at that. Bubbling away like a bugger. Right, so now we are going to blend this. So what we need. One of these. If you've got a food processor, it's just as good. So we want a smooth consistency. We don't really need, I might, I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning, but we wanna keep this very neutral because we're gonna use this in other dishes where we're gonna be adding all this stuff anyway. So we don't wanna put too much salt in it. But, you know, I can't cook anything and not season it. It's just, it's just, you just can't do that. Right, so, excuse the noise. So we just want a nice smooth consistency here, so... Uh. 
We're getting there now, so this is the kind of consistency that you want. Get a few more of those chunks out. And I appreciate it doesn't look massively appetising, but remember this is just a base for our beautiful curries that we're going to do. I think that'll do us. Right. I'm going to add a teaspoon of gram masala. Just give it a bit of kick. Give it a little bit more fruitiness. Stir that into it. So this is ready to use straight away. So if you've got, if you're planning to do a curry tonight, use it. If not, let it cool down. Separate it into individual bags. Obviously make sure they're leak proof. Chuck them in the freezer, probably last you a good, well, couple of months, I guess. I mean, it's just veg. You know, you've seen what's gone in there. It's just veg. That should freeze nicely. And then you can just get it out the day that you're gonna cook a curry. It's gonna be the best curry you've ever had, I promise you that. Okay, so that's the end of this. Join me again soon for episode two, where I'm gonna be cooking a curry with this. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure you turn on those notifications and all that jazzamataz. And then follow me uh, Instagram, remember that. And we'll see you again next time, guys. Thank you.